Hi, everybody. I'm Paul. I've got an idea here. So for many years now, uh, I've heard in business this notion of trust but verify. And I think the, the statement here is, you know, I mean, you got to work with other people and eventually you start to build a relationship with them. Maybe you trust them to do the right thing. Maybe you start to trust them to not do the right thing. But the trust is a, is a part of, of working in and around people long enough. Verify. If you're just trusting people, how do we know that anybody is effectively going to be ready to do, I don't know, well, whatever that is, uh, to, be, to actually have a position on the table, right? Their position on the table is justified. How do you know? So you end up having to verify uh, a lot. So trust, but verify. That's how it used to go. Well, I call bullshit. And specifically, it's the butt right in the middle. Like a big fat butt right in the middle of your conversation. Because every time you say the word but, at least with a lot of English you know, dialogue and stuff, let's put it this way. It, 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 it undermines the first thing that you just said right? It, it creates a conflict between the thing you just said, but the thing you just said, the, the thing you say now. So for instance, Paul, you're a nice guy, but dot, dot, dot. What does that sound like to you? It sounds like the bad news is coming, right? Something, but focus on this other thing more. That's why I don't like, especially when you combine how important trust and also verifying and, and having verification together. I don't like putting but right there. I would say it's an and. Trust, right, is very important, uh, especially in business, because it accelerates decision making. When you're able to uh, trust that somebody's going to take on that responsibility and have some ownership, do the best job they can do, do the right job, and like move that meaningfully. That's important. It, it accelerates your ability to do multiple things and do this thing uh, in a way that's that's fast and expedient. Trust also takes time to develop in, in people, right? And unfortunately, trust can also be easily broken. You might do a great job until one day when all of a sudden that thing that somebody was supposed to do for you, that they said that they would do, falls through now you're stuck holding the ball and now you look less trustable for somebody else. It can be a very fragile thing, right? Trust can easily be broken. Verification on the other hand, verify, right? Um, with, with big claims, uh, big claims require big evidence. So somebody walks into a room and has this big opinion like, oh, I think we should do this thing that is kind of wildly, uh, different than than what everybody else might have thought okay well that requires evidence because otherwise people are going to be going i don't know how much risk there is i'm worried about the fact that i've never heard this before and so on and so forth so with big claims you gotta have big evidence right verify where do you think you get evidence from um opinions and positions on the table they're meaningless unless they can be justified, unless somewhere underneath them, there's proof, either field work or there's a dollar figure or something, right? But there has to be some kind of basis for this opinion uh, at the table. Otherwise, who knows where it came from? It just appeared. Um, and whose responsibility is this, right? Think about like if, if, if verifying is important, if you just come to the table with an opinion and now all of a sudden not, it doesn't come with its own verification. Well, guess what? People, you're now asking people to, you're literally, I mean, without asking them, you're, you're expecting them to do the work to verify that what you're saying is valid. And I would also call bullshit on that, right? That's, you sh it might take time. People might want to come and, and go, hmm, that's interesting. I've never heard of that before. Let me go and investigate. But putting that on other people by default, right, makes them do a lot of work and ultimately undermines the goal, I think, for, for anyone who wants to build trust is that that should be easy to accept. It should be easy to accept the premise and also 
what else? Well, you should bring that evidence to the table as well. Right? It shouldn't just be an opinion with absolutely no proof. Why don't you front load that problem in the first place? And I always come with evidence or at least with in your back pocket, the real proof that what you're saying is right. So if somebody challenges you, which is fair, right? That you don't just defensively go, well, it's because of X, Y, and Z. But it's like, if you want to know more, right? Here's the actual fact. Okay. So it's not just about trust or about verification, right? There's no but in between. There's an and. But even more so, you want to build that verification, that evidence into your position. If you don't want people to have to constantly check your work, and oh, by the way, even if they do, they should find that it's based on truth. Okay, so how would you verify, right? How do you do this thing? You get ahead of the problem. Um, actual experience really helps, although you don't want to really start to build this notion of meritocracy, right? It's not because I have done the thing, therefore I am more valid. That's not, you're not talking about the person is more valid. We're talking about the idea that's on the table, right? Um, you have to listen a ton. Um, you have to distribute that, ev uh, that evidence. The, your evidence has to come from a distribution curve of various different experiences or different places. It can't all come from just one single source, otherwise, now all of a sudden, how valid is it? Uh, and also, it's really helpful to capture, to take notes. Um, those are meaningful to other people, but they're also meaningful to you. So you can kind of go back and say, oh yeah, uh, not only am I confirming maybe what I thought, you know, and it's easy to go grab the right cherries from your notes and here and there, but also it's very important to avoid that cognitive bias, that confirmation bias, um, that, that's inherent in all of us humans, uh, especially the ones that are more free with their opinion, to make sure that if there are things that invalidate this maybe position that you're starting to build up and, uh, and this opinion about how something should be, that you also have the capture of things that confirm that it's not like that. So second part is how, how in terms of trust? Um, well, first off, People that I work with can always trust that if I do have an opinion that I'm willing to speak out at the table on, that I have evidence for it. Um, but generally, I don't come to a meeting not knowing what it's about, uh, to a conversation, having absolutely finding that over the entire conversation, I had absolutely no opinion that had some kind of evidence because I usually don't find myself in conversations that have nothing to do with anything in my wheelhouse. I usually try to do, do work in such a way where people have invited me because maybe um, I might have some context or so on and so forth. So you always want to, uh, if you're going to have a position on the table, make sure it's evidence, right? Um, and it's not just some random opinion. Uh, also, if you are going to propose something that requires more trust than usual, and maybe therefore more verification than, than usual, don't just do that randomly in a group of people for the first time, right? Don't launch that idea without doing the little iterations and checking your, like checking with other people. Like the easiest way for the cognitive bias of if something is new, it must be wrong to evoke that in other people is to get into a big room and say something grand for the first time without anybody have ever have heard, heard of that before. They're all gonna go, what? No, what? Right? So what do you do instead? Of course, maybe you go one-on-one, -on -one, right? You, you, you try the idea out with this person over there, have a little conversation with them about what do you think about this, right? This is where I feel like I'm going in my mind about this particular thing. And I, I feel like I'm starting to have some proof of like that, that it's worth it to have that opinion. But what do you think? And you do that with a couple of people and now you're starting to seed that in the group that eventually comes together. And when you say that thing, not only is it not shocking anymore, but most people know where you're coming from, even if that's separately and individualist, individually, now we can come at that together. And by the way, they might have some really meaningful things that disprove a little 
that change the way that you were thinking, which is very important to be ready to have other people change how you're thinking. Um, Use the evidence, right? Still building this trust notion. How do we do that? Use the evidence carefully. Um, don't constantly be whipping out the same evidence to prove different points. <laughs> Maybe sometimes there is a case for that. But uh, if you're constantly running forward and saying something big and then constantly doing evidence, it almost becomes kind of paranoid. You really need to wait for the right time when people are like, well, I'm not exactly on the same page with you. Okay, tell me why. And then you can maybe drop that evidence a little bit so that it's not like a name drop and it's not like a, I'm setting you up for failure because I already have this story, but it's like, it's, it's, it's properly layered into the context of a dialogue together. Difference between a, a, a talk at somebody and a dialogue is that we're doing the dialogue together and we're moving in, we're conversing and we're collaborating about moving in a good direction together. Um, and honestly, the best way to start to develop trust uh, and verification at the same time is to ask this of others a little bit, right? In, in small amounts, not to constantly challenge them when they have a idea or a position to say, well, where, where do you come from with that, right? No, but like, in the course of working with that, help me understand, like, I, I like that idea, or I'm interested in more. How did you arrive at that? You know, just letting them have some dialogue to you as well. So an example of where I typically have trust uh, and verification, and I actually front load that, I constantly am verifying, I'm constantly looking for examples and real world situations in order to help construct and craft and recraft my opinions or positions about things is in performance and reliability, right? I'm a performance reliability nerd. And so my position on the table these days is that yes, big, big testing sometimes has to occur in cert environments, certification environments, and certainly in highly regulated or, uh, you know, very uh, conscript kind of environments, absolutely. But how do we, how, how are engineers supposed to solve problems? Well, we break problems down into smaller ones that we can manage. And the extreme of that, the not so extreme, uh, where a lot of the industry is going, is to move to a more continuous approach to various things. One of which just happens to be performance, yes, but also things like smaller, more frequent batches of code, maybe feature flagged, put into production, launched darkly, without being switched to users. Those kind of things are the, the notion of more continuous. It puts the practices in place without necessarily throwing all the risk into the equation too. Now with performance, more continuous does mean that you have to have a number of building blocks in place before you just expect that something that used to be done by a human being, uh, maybe properly, maybe not, by pressing a button in, in a system, will also uh, be equally risk-free and provide value in an automated environment. And so what I do is I do a lot of customer work. Remember that distribution curve? You, your experiences can't just be one type of experience. It really should be a distribution of all sorts of different things to round out your opinion. I do a lot of customer work with, yeah, with a lot of Fortune 100s, but I also have no problem if like a SMB right? Somebody who doesn't really make a lot of money for a company is having a particular issue or wants to develop this idea about how to do things differently. I will see the value of that for me and for them. And I'll respect that. And I'll, I'll take that as an opportunity sometimes to do the not 80% of the rule type of situation that I've already had plenty of experiences for with other people. So um, with that in mind, uh, the other thing is you really need to lean forward right? If you want these, these verifications, you don't just sit there waiting for other people to bring it to you. Sometimes you have to reach out into the world and sometimes you have to work really hard to get them. Uh, an example would be uh, with the command line interface. You know, two years ago, said platform did not have a command line interface. I said, how are we going to do all these plugins in all these CI systems? I don't want to redo 30 different plugins for 30 different systems. I don't want to do that. It's going to make a mess of an ecosystem. So what do we do? We have to central, we have to sort of consolidate our logistics 
into something that can be supported, but also apply to all those things. Command line interfaces, a lot of companies are doing the same things for that same reason, right? All the clouds, all those cloud platforms have a CLI. All the various different engines have their own CLI. Same thing with our platform. So I had to lean forward. I had to put a prototype out there for almost a year, right? Really working it really hard, setting expectations properly before the team decided, oh, wow, that was a really good idea. And let's transition that to a supported model. Now there's a team that helps build that, right? Um, it took a while to build the verification of customers really benefiting from this and this approach being right in order to develop the trust um, to say, let's move forward on this. We have to measure usage, right? I don't mean usage in terms of like what you're doing, but how many people are executing this directly from their laptop versus from a headless automated context in CI? That matters to us because the user experience if it starts by somebody trying things out, it's usually in a human being in front of the thing, not a button in a software, but a bunch of command lines. So if that experience isn't so great, I wanna know about that and I care about those people, not just how it works in an automated process that you've eventually figured out how to do properly. I want the user experience of that CLI to work well. So I need to measure certain things uh, in order to uh, justify and validate that it's worth it's worth spending a little time on our tracking versus adding some random proxy feature. You have to listen to the community. I have to constantly be in front of these customers and listening to what they're trying to accomplish, what, what we thought everybody would do and everybody's doing, but then there's these extra use cases. Um, and listening about the, the verifications that people are really needing in order to automatically be able to trust what you're saying there. Um, nothing gunners trust more than a lot of opportunity and revenue. So if for whatever reason you can attach the work that you're doing or the opinion or the position on the table to an awful amount of money, generally people listen, <laughs> but I mean, money is not the only thing, right? Um, quality of life, right? Uh, reliability. Uh, dependability of your teams, those kind of things also um, are ways to, to sort of measure the importance of something and, and how to build that trust and verification. So last thing, and I promise it's been a long one. Um, when it comes to trusting and verifying, I've said a couple things here that maybe not everybody has. And I want to take this back to uh, the notions of equity and inclusion, right? So I say this as me, right? All these things, you know, you, you should be able to get ahead of your problem, put a position on the table. Not everybody has the same agency uh, to put a position on the table. I've seen so many times where one person in the corner will have a good idea and, a, and a, an important challenge maybe, and a bunch of people will shut them down. And then less than five or 10 minutes later, somebody says the exact same thing, different person, different gravitas in the room and everybody goes, yeah, you know why? Remember that confirmation bias? So if I haven't heard it before, it's automatically wrong. That on a good day, that might be the situation, but in many cases there are inherent biases and we need to make it very easy and make some space for people to put positions on the table that otherwise wouldn't speak up. So that's a very important thing. Leaders have to purposely make this space for people. So if there's somebody like me in the room, want to talk a lot, make sure that you flip it over to other people, right? And more options are better. When you have more voices at the table with different perspectives, just think about it like this. If you only had one puzzle piece, how would you make the puzzle up? There is no such thing as a one puzzle piece puzzle. Right? So having a couple of options like puzzle pieces on the table is a better situation than only having one option. So with that in mind, trust, but verify, mm -mm -mm, right? Trust and verify, or better yet, build verification in so that people will trust you. That's all I got. <laughs> Ciao.